Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Kalbak Tash archaeological complex is a real gem folks, and it's got some seriously ancient rock petroglyphs that'll blow your mind. We're talking about a collection that's not just important in Altay, but on a worldwide scale. These petroglyphs, according to the mainstream story, go way way back, like Neolithic era kind of back, around 6000 years BC. And get this, the latest ones found at Kalbak Tash are from the Turkic rule era, dating back to the 7th century BC. That's some seriously ancient stuff my friends. They call these rock petroglyphs Kalbak Tash, which means flat stone in the translation game. Now, let me tell you, if you're into this kind of thing, Kalbak Tash is the place to be. It's got the biggest collection of rock petroglyphs in Altay, all perched up on a hill, overlooking the Chaya Highway. It's a sight to behold I tell you. Now, here's where things start to get real interesting. Some of these petroglyphs at Kalbak Tash are out of this world, literally. We're talking about subjects that are so mind-boggling and fantastic that they've got the scientific community buzzing. It's like a whole debate party happening in those circles my friends. You see, according to the so-called experts, these petroglyphs go way back to the Neolithic era, between the 6th and 4th millennium BC. Back in those days, the Altai tribes living in the Chaya and Kadan valleys were carving away on those flat stones, creating these mesmerizing rock carvings. And let me tell you, one of these carvings caught everyone's attention. Picture this. On one of those stones, there's a carving that looks uncannily like a flying space rocket. Yeah, you heard me right. A rocket. Now, we all know what a rocket looks like today, living in the 21st century and all, but here's the kicker. Those scientists, bless their souls, they can't agree on which object the ancient folks were trying to depict with this carving. It's like a never-ending debate, my friends. But, let me let you in on a little secret, just between us ordinary folks. Some people out there say that this whole debate thing is just a big smokescreen. Yeah, you heard it here first. They reckon that the scientists are intentionally keeping us in the dark, trying to distance us from the real story behind that rocket carving. I mean, who knows what really went down all those thousands of years ago, right? What do you think about this? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Joe Parr, a super experienced electronics engineer, and a guy with a law degree, is a real interesting character. He's been around the block I'm telling you. He spent not just one, but two winters in Antarctica. One time, he was chilling at the South Pole during DF-75, and another time, he was kicking it at Palmer Station during DF-78. But here's the crazy part. While he was hanging out at Palmer Station in October of 78, he stumbled upon something huge. He discovered what he called the Gamma Ray Transducer. Talk about a game changer, folks. And that's not all. Joe's been all over the place, literally. He's even wintered in Thule, Greenland. Plus, he's been involved in a whopping eight major projects across the world. This guy knows his stuff, no doubt about it. But here's where things get really wild. Joe Parr is one of those rare people who's actually spent a whole night on top of the Great Pyramid, not once, but twice. Yeah, you heard me right. 
in 77 and 87, he camped out up there, doing all sorts of electrical magnetic and radioactive measurements. Now, here's a fun fact for you. Joe's got something called Marfan Syndrome, but he believes that his work and being near the Great Pyramid have actually helped him heal. Ain't that something? Now, let's talk about these experiments Joe's been cooking up. This guy's done some mind-blowing stuff with rotating pyramids and all kinds of electromagnetic and radioactive sources. It's like he's taken science to a whole new level. One of Joe's mind-boggling discoveries is that the shape of the pyramid actually causes some pretty darn interesting physical phenomena. He's found this energy field that forms around the pyramid, kind of like a bubble or an orb. And get this, the strength of that energy field can change depending on the type of energy it's exposed to. Wild right? Joe's been measuring this energy field for over 20 years, and he's figured out that it varies with this thing called the 11-year sunspot cycle. He's got this crazy experimental setup where he rotates a pyramid in a magnetic field and that amps up the energy in the bubble. With that extra oomph, he can do all sorts of experiments to see what happens. Now, here's where it gets even more mind-blowing. When Joe cranks up the energy in that field, it starts to act like a shield, blocking out different types of energy fields, gravity or density, electromagnetic, and even radioactivity. And get this folks, he's even measured objects inside that bubble losing weight. I mean, who would have thought right? Joe's gone all in with his experiments. He stuck radioactive sources, radio frequency sources, and magnetic sources inside the pyramid, and he's measured how that energy field or orb shields him. He's done a whopping 55 experiments, and they all seem to point to one crazy conclusion, this pyramid can pass through solid objects. Can you believe it? Joe thinks it goes into hyperspace, like some other dimension or something. He's even got a fancy term for it. Hyperspace. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.